What's going on YouTube? Chris here from projectoption.com and in today's video I'll be answering nine options trading questions that I have been asked through the comment section on my YouTube channel. So if you like this format, please leave a comment down below and let me know what questions you might have so I can do a follow-up video to this one in the future. We're gonna cover a lot of different topics, so let's get started. The first question is asking, I still don't really understand what to do if you get assigned on a short call. On a put, I know, or at least I think, you just sell the shares because with a short put, if you are assigned, you will be long shares, meaning you have a positive share position. But with a short call, if you get assigned, you will be negative shares. So what do you do and how do you close a negative share position? As I just mentioned, if you are short a put, meaning you sold the put contract and you get assigned on that put contract, you will be long 100 shares of stock, meaning you purchased 100 shares of stock at the put option strike price. And that's because the person who bought the put, if they exercise the put, they are opting to sell or short 100 shares of stock at the strike price. But as someone who shorted that option, you will take on the opposite position, meaning you will be long 100 shares of stock if you are assigned on a short put contract. So with a short call, it's the exact opposite. If you are short a call option, meaning you sold the call option, and you are assigned on that short call, you will have a share position of negative 100 shares for every call that you were assigned on, and that means that you have a short stock position. So all you have to do to close a short stock position is buy the number of shares that you are short. So in the case of being assigned on one short call contract, you will have a share position of negative 100 shares. And to close that position, you just have to buy 100 shares of that stock and you will close your short share position. You will no longer have any risk in that position after being assigned on the shares and then closing the shares that you were short. Question number two is, if you think the price will increase, would you buy a call or sell a put as both make money if the stock price increases in value? and vice versa. If you want the stock price to decrease, would you sell a call or buy a put because both of those positions profit if the stock price decreases? Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. So first of all, it depends on what you want to happen with the stock price. So if you think the stock price is going to increase significantly and in a short period of time, then buying a call option is probably going to be a better trade than selling a put option because when you sell a put, you have limited profit potential and lots of risk, whereas if you buy a call option, you have theoretically unlimited profit potential and limited loss potential. And if you think the stock price is going to increase significantly and in a short period of time, that means you have a very bullish assumption and therefore buying a call option is probably the better trade for that assumption than selling a put option. As selling a put option is more of a conservative bullish trade, meaning that you think the stock price will increase, but you don't necessarily think it's going to increase significantly. And when you sell a put, you can actually still make money if the stock price stays the same and even decreases a little bit, so long as the stock price remains above your short put strike price as time passes. If you buy a call option and the stock price remains the same or goes down or does not increase fast enough, you will lose money. And for that reason, Selling a put option is a higher probability trade, but with that, you have limited profit potential and lots of, lots of loss potential. But if you buy a call option, you will have significant profit potential and limited loss potential, but it's going to be a lower probability trade because as I just mentioned, you will need to be right about the stock price direction and the magnitude of that stock price movement. Otherwise, you will lose money when buying a call option. So it's the same exact scenario if you are bearish on the stock, meaning you think it will decrease in value in the future. If you think a stock's price will decrease in the future, then if you think it's going to decrease significantly and in a short period of time, then buying a put option is probably going to be better than selling a call option because with buying a put option, you have significant profit potential and limited loss potential, but with selling a call option, you have limited profit potential and theoretically unlimited loss potential and selling a call option is going to be a little bit higher probability of a trade because when you sell a call option, the stock price can decrease, remain the same, or even increase so long as it does not exceed your short call strike price. And as time passes, that short call position will profit so long as one of those three scenarios plays out. Since you can make money in many different ways when selling a call option, 
it's going to be a higher probability trade. But because of that, you have less profit potential than you would if you purchased a put option. So when you purchase a put option, if the stock price does not decrease significantly and in a short period of time, you are going to lose money on that trade from the loss of extrinsic value as time passes, which is referred to as time decay. So to make a long story short, if you think the stock price is going to increase significantly in a short period of time or decrease significantly in a short period of time, then buying a call option or buying a put option would probably be the better trade for that assumption given that you have better risk reward with buying a call option and, and buying a put option. On the other hand, if you don't think the stock price is going to increase or decrease significantly in the near future, but you still wanna have a directional play, then selling a call option would be a high probability way to short the stock, meaning that you have a high probability of making money. And on the other hand, selling a put option is a high probability way to be bullish the stock, meaning you'll make money if the stock price increases, but selling a call and selling a put both have limited profit potential and significant loss potential and high probabilities of making money. But on the other hand, buying put options and buying call options have limited loss potential and significant profit potential, but a low probability of making money because you need the stock price to move in your favor and in a short period of time. Question number three. Hi, Chris. I like your videos. Amazing work. Thank you. I have one practical question. How to turn a long call into a profit? Do you just let it expire if it's in the money or sell it to close before expiration? If you buy a call option and the price increases, you will have an unrealized profit on that call option. So for example, if you bought a call option for $5 and the stock price increased and now the call option is $7.50, you will have a $250 unrealized profit for every call option that you purchased. And to realize that profit, all you would have to do is sell the call option at whatever current price it is. And in this case, let's say you sold the call option for $7.50. With an initial purchase price of $5, you would realize or lock in a $250 profit for every call option that you purchased. Now, if you wanted to let the call option expire in the money, you would actually purchase 100 shares of stock for every call contract that you allow to expire in the money. And you would purchase those shares of stock at the call option strike price. You could then sell those shares at the current market price, but I would not really recommend letting a call option expire in the money if your goal is to sell the shares anyways. I would just recommend selling the call option and realizing the gain on the increase in the call options value and not dealing with automatic exercise via allowing the calls to expire in the money and then selling the shares after you've exercised the call option. The reason I wouldn't recommend that is because you will pay exercise fees for letting the call option expire in the money, meaning you will rack up more trading fees for you, meaning you will pay more trading fees in general, but also if you allow the call option to expire in the money, you will actually be holding those shares through the weekend and if the stock price decreases on Monday morning and opens up at a much lower price, then you will not have as much of a profit as you would have if you just sold the call options before expiration. In the next question, the person is asking, I still don't get selling calls and puts. If they expire worthless, how are you still able to collect the premium you paid for them if they are worth zero? When you sell call options and sell put options, you want the put options and call options to decrease in value. And ideally, if they go to zero dollars in value, then you have realized the maximum profit potential on that trade. If you sell an option, your P&L or your unrealized P&L will adjust every minute of the day as the stock price changes, as time passes, and as implied volatility changes, which just means the option prices are changing. So if you sell an option for $1 and the next day the option price is 95 cents, you will have a $5 profit for every option that you sold. If three more days go by and the option price is now 75 cents, since you sold the options initially for a dollar, now you will have a $25 unrealized profit, at which point you could purchase the options at 75 cents and realize your $25 gain for every option that you sold for $1 and purchased for 75 cents. So you shorted them for $1 and you bought them back, meaning you closed the position for 75 cents and your net profit in that case is $25 for every option that you sold and then closed. So as more time passes and ideally as the option price continues to decrease, your unrealized profit will continue to increase and at expiration, if the option is out of the money, 
and worth zero dollars. You can allow the option to expire, at which point you would realize the maximum profit potential on that trade. And for example, if you sold the option for a dollar and it expired with a value of zero dollars, you would keep $100 in profits for every option that you sold for a dollar and allow it to expire worthless for zero dollars. But keep in mind along the way, your unrealized profit would have increased gradually until it reached the maximum profit potential of $100 when the options expired. So for example, if one day before expiration, your out of the money option is worth five cents, if you sold it for a dollar initially, you would have an unrealized profit of $95 per option, at which point you could just buy back the options for five cents and realize your profit and close the trade. The next question is, at around 11 minutes, you mentioned losing money on a call when the stock price goes above the strike price. If I bought an option for a stock at $110 and the stock price is now $200, did I not just make a bunch of money? In other words, won't someone want to buy 100 shares of my stock at $110 if the current price is now $200? This part confused me. Am I missing something? So this person is saying if they bought a call option with a strike price of $110 and the stock price increased to $200, what happens? Well, if you buy a call option with a strike price of $110 and the stock price goes up to $200, that 110 call option now has $90 of intrinsic value, meaning that option is going to be worth $9,000 per contract. So if you paid $500 in premium for that option initially, and the stock price increased to $200, you would be sitting on an unrealized profit of at least $8,500 per call option, since if you buy a call option for $500 in premium, and the option price increases to $9,000 per contract, you would have a profit of $8,500. The reason for that is that you could exercise the option and therefore buy 100 shares of stock at $110 per share, which is the call strike price, and then you could sell them at the current market price of $200, and therefore you would have a $90 profit per share, and on 100 shares, you would have a $9,000 gain. But since you paid $500 in premium for that call option, that cost offsets your profit. So if you have a $90 per share gain, but you paid $5 for the option, then you have a $85 per share gain net net. So on 100 shares, that would be an $8,500 gain. To make a long story short, if you buy a call option and the stock price increases significantly above that call option strike price, you will have a very, very nice profit on your hands. And all you have to do to realize that profit is sell the option for the current market price you do not have to exercise the option and then sell the shares. Very rarely do options traders exercise the options with the intent of selling the shares after they've taken the share position. More often than not, options traders are trying to profit from price changes in the option contracts themselves and have absolutely no intention of ever exercising the option if they bought a call or put. Moving on to the next question. Thank you. After buying a bull call spread, buying one call and selling one call at a higher strike price, when I want to close the position, do I have to close the buy call and sell call separately or consider it as a deal to close both in one action? So this person is asking if you buy a call spread, meaning you buy a call here and you sell a call at a strike price here, you have entered into a bull call spread position, which means you've purchased a call spread. Now, when you want to close that spread, you can do it in one transaction and all you have to do is sell the call that you purchased and buy the call that you've shorted and you do that in one transaction and you will close the spread for whatever price it is currently trading for. So for example, if you bought a call spread for $2.50 and later on in the trade, the stock price has increased and now the spread is worth $3, you have an unrealized gain of $50 per call spread that you purchased. And if you wanted to realize that gain, you could just sell the call spread in one transaction for $3. And since you initially purchased the call spread for $2.50, you would have a 50 cent gain on that spread. But since we have to account for the option contract multiplier of 100, that 50 cent gain would actually be a $50 gain for every call spread that you bought for $2.50 and sold for $3. And one more time, you can do that in one transaction. So if you buy a call spread, meaning you buy a call at the strike price here and sell another call at the higher strike price, to close that same trade, you just sell the call that you purchased 
and buy back the call that you shorted. You do that in one transaction and you've closed the trade and you will realize whatever P&L you had at that moment. Next question is about probabilities and risk and reward, which is a good one because this is a very common question that I get on my YouTube channel. My only question is, why would someone take a position where your potential loss is double or triple your potential profit? It doesn't seem to make sense to get in the habit of risking $310 to make $190, etc. Am I misunderstood? A lot of people don't understand that when you're trading options, it's a risk and reward game and the risk and reward is directly related to the probability of making money on that particular trade. For example, let's take buying a call option as the example trade. When you buy a call option, you have theoretically unlimited profit potential, but you have limited loss potential, but buying a call option is a low probability trade, meaning that you have a less than 50% probability of making money on that trade because you need the stock price to increase quickly before the option expires and you need the stock price to increase by a significant magnitude to offset the time decay or the loss of extrinsic value in that call option as time passes. So when you buy a call option, you have a lot of profit potential and limited loss potential, but that's the case because you need to be right about the stock price increasing and you need that stock price increase to happen quickly. Otherwise you are going to lose money on your call purchase. The exact opposite is true when you sell options. So if you sell a call option, you have limited profit potential because the stock price or the option price can only go to zero. And because of that, your maximum profit is the difference between what you sold the call option for and zero dollars. So if you sold the call option for $2.50, the most you can make on that trade is $250 per call contract that you sold for $250. And that's because if the call option goes to $0, you will have a $2.50 gain per contract. And because of that, when you multiply by the option contract multiplier of 100, you get a profit of $250 for every call option that you sold. But selling a call option has theoretically unlimited loss potential because if the stock price increases by $1,000, then that call option that you sold is going to have a significant amount of intrinsic value. And let's just say the call options value goes to $25,000. If you initially sold it for $250 in premium, you would have a loss of $24,750 per call contract that you sold. So obviously you have very limited profit potential and a significant amount of loss potential, but you have a high probability of making money because when you sell a call option, you can make money if the stock price stays the same, you make money if the stock price goes down, you make money if the stock price even increases gradually, so long as the stock price is below your break even price at the time of expiration. Now, because there are so many scenarios where you can make money, you have a greater than 50% probability of making money when selling a call option, but because you have a greater than 50% probability of making money on that trade, your risk is going to be greater than your profit potential. So I encourage you to go out there and look at various trade setups, look at the risk and the reward, and you will find that when the risk is greater than the reward, the trade has a greater than 50% probability of making money. And when the reward is greater than the risk, the trade has less than 50% probability of making money. So this is a great question and it just highlights the fact that when you're trading options, it is a probability game. And when you have a high probability of making money, you will have more risk than profit potential. And when you have a low probability of making money, you will have more profit potential than risk. Up next, we have an iron condor question. Example iron condor, the trader sells the 100 101 call spread and sells the 94 93 put spread with the stock price right in the middle at $97. If I have an iron condor set up like this, my collateral will be $100. If the stock price is between 100 and 101 at expiration, is it possible to lose more than my 100 collateral on the trade? So this trader is saying that since they sold an iron condor with $1 call spreads and $1 put spreads, the maximum value of this iron condor at expiration is going to be $100 in premium because the difference between the strike prices on both sides is $1. And if an iron condor is worth $1 at expiration, that means in actual dollar terms, that iron condor is worth $100. So in this case, the trader's maximum loss potential is actually going to be less than $100 since they are going to collect a premium 
for selling this iron condor in the first place. So in this case, they're selling a $1 wide call spread and a $1 wide put spread. And let's just say they collect 50 cents for selling this $1 wide iron condor. In this case, the worst case that can happen is the stock price can increase above $101, in which case the 100, 101 call spread would be worth $1 at expiration, or the stock price could fall below $93, at which point the 94, 93 short put spread would be worth $1. And if you sell an option position for 50 cents and it increases in value to $1, you will have a 50 cent loss on that option position for every option position that you sold. And when we account for the $100 option contract multiplier, we get a maximum loss of $50 for every iron condor that was sold. So if the trader sold the iron condor for 50 cents, and at expiration it was worth $1, then that would be a maximum loss potential of $50 for every iron condor sold. But this trader is asking if the stock price is in between one of the spreads at expiration, meaning since they sold the 100, 101 call spread, if the stock price is at $100.40, this iron condor would actually be worth 40 cents at expiration because the 100 call would have 40 cents of intrinsic value, while the 101 call the 94 put and the 93 put would all expire worthless, leaving this iron condor with a net value of 40 cents at expiration. Since they initially sold it for 50 cents and it expired with a value of 40 cents, they would actually have a $10 profit per iron condor sold. But let's say the stock price was actually at $100.80. In this case, the 100 short call would have 80 cents of intrinsic value. The 101 call would expire worthless the 94 put and the 93 put would expire worthless, leaving this iron condor with a net value of 80 cents. Since they sold the iron condor for 50 cents and it expired with a value of 80 cents, then this trader would lose $30 for every iron condor sold because they sold the iron condor for $50 in premium and at expiration the iron condor was worth $80 in premium, netting a $30 loss for every iron condor sold. So to make a long story short, if the stock price is in between one of your spreads at expiration when you sell an iron condor, you will not realize the maximum loss potential because the only way you realize the maximum loss potential when selling an iron condor is if the stock price is above the long call or below the long put, meaning that if the stock price is not beyond one of the long options in your iron condor, you will not realize the maximum loss potential if the stock price is in between one of your spreads at expiration. The final question on our list is about a covered call. This person is asking, if my covered call ends in the money, I have to buy back the intrinsic value. For example, if I sell a covered call for 75 cents with a strike price of $70, if on expiration day the stock price is 75, I have to buy back the contract for $500 and what's left of extrinsic value, probably pennies, say I bought it back for $505. Does that mean I lost $430? If you sell a call option as part of a covered call, meaning you bought 100 shares of stock and you sell a call option above the shares of stock for 75 cents, and at expiration, you have to buy back that short call with a strike price of $70 and the stock price is at $75, and you're saying that the call option has $5 of intrinsic value but a couple of pennies of extrinsic value remaining and you have to buy that call option back for $505. Yes, you would realize a $430 loss on the call portion of that trade, but since you own shares of stock and when you trade a covered call, you realize the maximum profit potential if the stock price is above the short call strike price at expiration, then you would actually have a net profit on that trade. So just because you bought back the short call at expiration for a $430 loss, you still would have an overall profit on your position since you bought a covered call position, meaning you bought 100 shares of stock and you sold a call option at a higher strike price and the stock price was above your short call strike price at expiration. That means you realize the maximum profit potential of the covered call position itself and overall, but compared to just buying 100 shares of stock and not selling a call against it at all and therefore not trading a covered call position, you would have made more money if you were long 100 shares of stock and the stock price increased compared to if you sold a covered call position and the share price was significantly above the call's strike price that you sold. So to make a long story short, when you buy a covered call position, you are going to make money 
if the stock price increases and is above your short call strike price at expiration, but compared to simply buying 100 shares of stock, you would not have made as much money. So I know I moved very quickly in this video and we covered a lot of different topics, but I've left a lot of video links in the description that are related to all of the things that I've discussed in this video. So if you need a more in-depth explanation or you wanna dive deeper into one of the topics that I've discussed in this video, please check the links down in the description or in the cards that you can see somewhere up here during the video. As I said earlier in this video, if you have any questions for a future Q&A with me, please leave them down in the comment section as I would love to continue doing a video series just like this. If you have any questions related to anything I've discussed in this video, you can also leave a comment down below and I will answer your question as soon as I can. I'm Chris from Project Option and I will see you in the next video.